welcome to another episode of Failing My Way in Public, in my car, to success. You could have been anywhere else, but you're here with me, and I appreciate that, so let's get started. Now, first of all, if that intro bores you, just know for the next one, you just gotta skip a few seconds. It's not hard. Like, this whole, gotta have a hook, gotta have a hook. No, this is a bit of a longer form content. I'm sick and tired of these one minute videos, like trying to fulfill everyone's needs and wants in 60 seconds. It's not gonna happen, okay? So what I do with this is, this will be about seven, eight minutes. I'll clip it up a little bit, maybe put another one out, but this is the longer form. So it's 10 minutes, stick with it, okay? So I did a post this morning on LinkedIn and it was around, if I could speak in front of this person, I could speak in front of anybody. And there's a story I like to share and it's it really, helps me to explain to people how I'm able to able to overcome these doubts that I have. Because I get up on stage, whether it's doing public speaking, whether it's doing sales training, negotiation skills, whatever it is, I have doubts, I have worries. And there's, there's that constant fear, that constant imposter syndrome. And I know I come across as a cool, calm, collected person, but it's not the case. Now the first thing is, I put the work in, I put the effort in, I make sure that I'm prepared for when it comes to that time. Sometimes probably a little bit too prepared, but anyway. The only way you're really gonna learn if you're doing it right is by doing it. But you can still get yourself prepared enough, which is knowing what you're gonna be speaking about, knowing the content, practicing that through, the tone, the delay in response when you're speaking, all of those things become, you become better at by doing, but being aware of them before you do it is still is still a good strength. But I knew that if I could speak in front of this one person, and then there's another person as well, I knew that I could speak in front of anybody. So if I go back many, 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 many years, we have a family tradition, which is Friday night dinners. Now, at the time, it was annoying, especially when I reached my teenage years, because my friends were going out, they were doing stuff, and I was stuck indoors uh, with my parents, my grandparents, my auntie, my brothers. Yeah, so looking back, I'm so grateful to have those times. But at the time, it was very annoying. But what was even more annoying was that I, I'm the youngest of three brothers, three boys. And I was the butt of all the jokes. I was the one that my brother would practice wrestling moves on. I was the one that they would convince me that a five pound note wasn't wasn't as good as a 50 pence piece. You know, all of these things that brothers do. And I, I get it, but I got my payback every now and then by informing my parents that they'd, my brothers had gone out or done something. So, you know, I got my own back every now and then. But Friday nights, family dinners. Not only were my brothers there to take the mick out of me, but so was my dad. If anyone knows, my dad is an absolute practical joker, an absolute piss taker, um, and he never really knows when to stop. I love him, but you know, sometimes it's a bit too much. If I could tell you the amount of times he's embarrassed us when we've been out and done stuff, you'd, uh, you'd laugh your head off. But anyway, that's what, that's what they're there for. So anytime I spoke, anytime I said anything, I would be ridiculed. I'd be laughed at. So obviously you don't want to speak, you don't want to say anything. Now what I became good at there was actually listening, you know, actually being at a table, being present, but observing what was going on. And that's what I find interesting with my niece and nephews at the moment. I like sat there at the table and they're on their phones to keep them quiet. We can discuss that for another time, but are they taking stuff in that's going on around the table, discussions that are happening? Because I wasn't sat there on my Game Boy or sat there on my, uh, I was just sat there. You know, and I was either being, practical jokes were being put on me. Um, it wasn't easy. So you can imagine that that would probably be a real negative for anyone when they are growing up, when they're trying to communicate with people because you're so nervous at that time, you don't want to speak to anybody. But for me, I turn it into a positive. I always say to myself, if I can handle that dinner table, I can handle anywhere. If I can handle my dad's ridicule and piss take, then yeah, I can handle anywhere. So that is how I, that's my mindset shift. That's how I'm able to switch things around. So when I get up on stage, yes, I'm nervous. Yes, I'm worried. Yes, I've got doubts. But I go back to that time and I know to myself, I say to myself, if I can overcome that, I can overcome anything. And along with that, there's, there's always another person that I think of in my life. And it was one of the first real jobs I had when I was young and I went to go and work at a property company and the manager there Kate uh, who was a character by herself I would be on the phone and I'd be calling up clients 
And now you can imagine, if I'm making 50 calls a day, trying to make calls a day, you're saying the same stuff. I'm not reading from a script, but you're kind of saying the same sort of thing. And imagine like you're in a small office and there's only four or five of you and you're hearing that person on the phone constantly saying the same stuff. And what I used to say to clients was, well, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, and one day I got something thrown at my head and I looked up and it was Kate. And she said, stop saying to be honest. And I was like, well, I'm well, first of all, I was like, oh my God, my head. <laughs> Second of all, I was like, well, what should I say? And she was like, well, stop saying that first of all, but maybe say to be fair. Because the trouble is, when you, say the, when you say the phrase to be honest, that implies everything you've said before is actually a lie. Yeah, think about that. Well, I'm going to be honest with you now. Yeah, well, okay, were you dishonest before then? So I stopped saying to be honest, then I started saying to be fair. But again, it's a small office, I'm making these calls, and I started saying the same thing again and again and again. So again, I get something thrown at me. Stop saying that, Mark. So again, I know that you put me on the phone to anybody, you put me in a room with anybody, you put me in a meeting with anybody, yes, I'm nervous, yes, I'm worried, okay? But if I can handle my dad, and I can handle Kate, I can handle anyone. That is my mindset shift. But along with that, what I also think as well is, do I have something which can help somebody, which can solve their problem, which can be of value? Then it is my duty to speak to that person and inform them, have a communication with them, understand more about them, and from that offer the services that we have because it can help them with their day-to-day. -day. It can get them to where they want to be. All of these outcomes and results happen because I'm willing to put myself in an uncomfortable position to communicate and talk with somebody. So I want you to think about that. When you're nervous, when you're worried, have this mindset shift and all that you want to do is be able to start. And once you start, you have to take the next step, take the next step, take the next step. And I'll leave you with a quote from one of my favorites, which is Zig Ziglar. The best way, best way to start is to get started. The only way. Have a great day, everyone, and I will see you on the next episode. Take care, everyone.